Hi everybody, my name is Jason. My name is Eli. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. We thank you guys very, very much for joining us and our little table here today. And we appreciate that you spend this time. And I'm sure Yah appreciates that we are spending time doing what he told us to do, which is the Shema, which is to hear and obey. And when we are to hear and obey, what are we supposed to hear and obey, Eli? We're supposed to listen to his words and obey his commands. Yes, and what are his commands, Nicole? The Torah. The Torah. Right, and what is the Torah, Eli? It's the first five books of the Bible. And what do they contain, Eli? Uh, it commands that Yahuwah has given us, like don't eat the blood, don't eat pork, don't marry your sister, things like that. Yep, yeah, things of that nature. Things that are very good for us to be doing and things that will harm us if we do them. Things that will lead us astray. Things that will take us out of covenant with our Creator. And our Creator is a righteous Creator. He is a faithful creator. He's very loyal to all of us. And if you have life and if you're breathing right now, then he's loyal to you because he has kept you alive for a yet another day. And so we need to give all our praises to Yah, all glory to Yahushua. And who is Yahushua, Eli? He is the son of Yahuwah. You may know him as Jesus Christ, but his name in Hebrew is Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua HaMashiach and Yeshua, Yahushua, means salvation. And that's what it means. And so the name Jesus doesn't mean uh, salvation. And it is also invented in the year, the letter J was invented in the year 1529. So there was no Jesus ever around. There's no, there no such person ever called Jesus. And, it, you know, Acts 4.12 says there's only one heaven under, uh, there's only one name under heaven by which man may be saved. And so we need to make sure we have that right. So today we are continuing on and we are continuing on in our, in numbers. And so we will begin with the handy dandy split screen. Right, um, we're missing half of our crew. I'm missing my wingman and my other uh, guy, and uh, they're out there doing stuff right now. So we will get in numbers 15. This will be super exciting. Eli, you ready? Yep. How you guys doing today, Nicole? Good, good. Eli? Good. Everyone out? All right, we're alive. All right, and Yahuwah has spoken to El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, When ye come, when ye are come into the land of your habitations, which I give you, and will make an offering by fire unto Yahuwah, in ascending smoke offering, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, or in a freewill offering, or in your solemn feast, to make a sweet savor unto Yahuwah of the herd or of the flock, then shall he that offers his offering unto Yahuwah bring an oblation of a tenth deal of flour mingled with a fourth part of a hin of oil. All right, how much is a hin of oil, Eli? Let's see, a hen is about one quart. Oh, yeah, it's about one quart, one liter, and uh, an ephah is... Uh, three and one half pounds or 1.6 kilograms. All right, five. And the fourth part of the hen of wine for a drink offering shall you prepare with the ascending smoke offering or sacrifice for one lamb or a ram or for a ram. You shall prepare for an oblation two tenth deals of flour mingled with a third part of a hen of oil. And for a drink offering, you shall offer the third part of a hen of wine for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And when you prepare a bullock for an ascending smoke offering or for a sacrifice in performing a vow or peace offerings unto Yahuwah, then shall he bring with a bullock an oblation of three tenths deals of flour mingled with a half of hin of oil. And you shall bring for a drink offering half a hin of wine for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Thus shall it be done for one bullock or for one ram, or for a lamb, or a kid. According to the number that ye prepare, so shall ye do every one according to their number. All right, Eli, what's going on? So basically, this like in the feast days when you bring an offering, you also like bring like an, with uh, a grain offering with like part of flour and with mingled with oil. It's interesting. I find it interesting that Yah. I think Yah drinks wine, maybe. Um, because I mean, you're supposed to pour, you're supposed to put wine on the this the smoke fire, the Sydney smoke fire. So um, maybe Yah drinks. I don't know. It might just give it a different fragrance. Or a different fragrance. Thank you. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah as ye do, so he shall do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the assembly and also for the stranger that sojourns with you. An ordinance forever in your generations as ye are. So shall the stranger be before Yahuwah. Okay, I think this needs to go under mm -hmm. a command. Um, That's our same one that we already have. All right, and so we, ha we have it under a command, and so this is going to go just basically reiterate commands, right? Yep. Okay, and you already have that? The one tour for the Ebrium and the stranger. Okay, because 15 should go under that, mm -hmm. and also 16. Yep. 
one Torah and one manner of law shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourns with you. Eli, what, what are we saying here? What does this mean? So basically anyone who is a foreigner who is like, who would basically come into the land, they have to follow the same exact rules as the children of Yashorel. Their, their rules are not any different. Right. And so, well, I mean, what, what about today? What about today? Everybody's taking the laws of God. They say they don't apply to us, Eli. They're on the cross. Well, we would technically be foreigners, so we should be following his commands. Yeah, we, we should. Yeah, there's absolutely one law, and the law is good for all generations. All right, 17. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, When ye come into the land whither I bring you, then it shall be that when ye eat of the bread of the land, ye shall offer up a heave offering unto Yahuwah. You shall offer up a cake of the first of your dough for a heave offering. As you do the heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye heave it. Okay? Of the first of your dough, ye shall give unto Yahuwah a heave offering in your generations. And if ye have erred and not observed all these commandments, which Yahuwah has spoken unto, unto Moshe, even, even if... All that Yahuwah has commanded you by the hand of Moshe from the day that Yahuwah commanded Moshe and henceforward among your generations. Okay, Eli, break that down. What, is it, what are we saying? Uh, so basically, if you like don't uh, follow his commands right, you have to like bring an offering for an unintentional sin. Right. Okay. Then it shall be, if ought be committed by ignorance without the knowledge of the assembly, that all the assembly shall offer one young bullock for an ascending smoke offering for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah with his oblation and his drink offering, according to the manner, and one kid of the goats for his sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, and it shall be forgiven them, for it is ignorance. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah, and their sin offering before Yahuwah for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, and the stranger that sojourns among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sins ignorantly. When he sins by ignorance before Yahuwah, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. Now, this is a very, um, okay, we're, actually we're not there yet. Ye shall have one Torah for him that sins through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Yisrael and for the stranger that sojourns among them. All right, so I think that would be added in there right there as well. In that same thing, Nicole, 29, you shall have one Torah for him that sins through ignorance, both for him that is born among. I mean, that, that it's everything, right? It, the Torah applies to all of us for all generations. Right. So 29 goes in there. In that same one, right? In that same one, right. Okay. All right, 30. But the soul that does ought presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproach as Yahuwah. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because he has despised the word of Yahuwah and has broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. And while the children of Yashrael were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Shabbat. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto El Moshe and El Aron and unto all the assembly. All right, so what are we dealing with here? And I was joking with Nicole because I, she picked up sticks on Shabbat. Um, but I was joking with her because it, she had to pick up sticks. The 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 the, uh, the bulls had run the gates through, and so we there was I, essentially she's picking up the gate or something. I don't know what she's picking up, but uh, we, I was joking with her, and she was she's like, ah, you threw me under the bus. What sticks are you picking up, Nicole? I had to pick up a stick to fix the gate because they broke the stick on the gate. Yes, and so we were stopping our oxen from destroying everything left that we had, and and. Uh, Unfortunately, it fell on Shabbat, so I guess I will I will bear that iniquity myself as being the, the leader of the family. But um, she wasn't gathering sticks. What are we gathering here? What what who was this guy gathering? Why is this a big deal, Eli? I think he was gathering sticks for a fire. I think this guy was belligerent. I think this guy was like, you know what? I don't I didn't prepare. I'm doing it, and I'm going to do it anyway, right? If this guy was out there accidentally picking up sticks or doing this, I think people would have said, hey, this is the Shabbat. He goes, oh, no. And he would have had to go you know, offer sin offering or whatever it was on that. But I don't think that was the case. And they put him in the ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, the man shall surely be surely put to death and all the assembly shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the assembly brought him without the camp 
and stoned him with stones, and he died as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So again, um, I think that was belligerence. I don't think that was like, I, I think it wasn't an accidental. I just went and accidentally picked up a stick or um, I'm fending off like the cows that are ravaging my cornfield or anything of the sort. So um, this is, the next part is really cool. This is getting into cool stuff. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, and bid them that they make them zitzits in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the zitzit of the borders a ribbon of blue. All right, now um, we have a huge problem with this command um, because the entire here's how the Talmudic Jews do it. The Talmudic Jews, the ones that we are not, and the ones who follow in a whole bunch of extra books, and the ones that are do a whole bunch of evil stuff. They only have white in their zitzits. They're like, well, we don't have the blue that we can get from some dye or something that we had back in the day, and blah blah from blah. The squid. Yeah, the squid. I think a snail. A squid or a snail. Snail, maybe. snail or something. Yeah, we don't have that blue. We can't get that anymore. So they wear straight white. The problem is there is no white in this. It is just straight blue. The problem that we had, and I didn't even realize that till today when we were going over this, is that our zitzits are blue and white. And Nicole just got done making zitzits yesterday. She was sitting there like a trooper. Um, I was about to get her crochet needles after seeing her just work as hard as she was working. But she went and put all this stuff together and she made these beautiful zitzits. And it, it actually spells Yahuwah because it goes... It, how, did, how did you do this, Nicole? So they have 10... It's either 10 wraps or 10 knots at the top. Yep. Which is Yod. And then it has 5. Yep. Which is Hey. Yep. And then 6... Vod. Yep. And then five again. Yep. And so it's basically a gematria in Hebrew gematria when that spells it out. It's Yahuwah. And I mean, as beautiful as that sounds and as beautiful as these zitzis are, um, it says ribboned of blue. I don't know where we ended up with white. I don't. So I went and researched this morning to figure out where the white came from. Where'd it come from? And it's a Jew thing. It's a Jew thing. It says the zitzis are always in the same color as the gown, which is usually white. What gown? Their shirts. Well, yeah, well, we don't have a gown. Because they wear white shirts right. with their... So that's why. So they, they, so okay. they added the so, white because okay. they had it matched. Yeah, so 99% of the zitzits out there are incorrect. And so I'm going to go over some of the cool stuff here in just a second. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, and uh, and it shall be unto you a zitzit, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohim. All right, so we have brand new commandments. Numbers 1538 and Numbers 1539. Um, and this is a lot of women do not wear zitzits, and that I believe is incorrect. This is the children of Yashrael. If you are a child of the Most High, which I hope all of you guys out there listening are, then you will definitely want to get some blue zitzits and put blue zitzits on there. And Nicole will be making me some uh, blue ones today after we've found out this. And actually, you know, we've we've worn blue and white zitzits for, I don't know. Seven, eight years. Seven or eight years. And we, you know, it's until you go through these commandments and read them commandment for commandment. What does it say? And then you figure out where do the traditions come from? How do, how do we end up with what we're doing? There's no, there's no white in these. And so if you're wearing white in your seats, that is incorrect. And if you are a woman who's not wearing seats, that is incorrect. Why are we wearing seats, Eli? It says they'll be, then you'll remember to obey all the commands. We'll, when we... Before we start forgetting that we're obeying his commands, we can look down at our zitzits and remember that we are following his commands. Everything should be about Yah. Every single thing. When you go to the bathroom, you're supposed to have zitzits. You take your zitzits off, right? You you have zitzits all around you. It is We're supposed to be surrounded by our Elohim. We're supposed to have Yah attached to us. And the end times, people will look to those people with blue ribbons and zitzits and they will say, take us to your Elohim, take us to Yahuwah, show us the way to Yahuwah. And we will show them, we will show them the laws, statutes and commands and we will show them the most exciting thing that is ever out there, which are the laws, statutes and commands of our creator and the ways forward. All right, so that is that. You have the commands, Nicole? Yep. Everything. Now I wanna take us all further into this thing. I'm gonna get rid of my handy dandy split screen. And I am going to take us into my handy dandy um, web browser. And I'm going to show you some examples of incorrect zit seats. Everything in here is, it says biblical blue thread, right? There's no white. Those are all incorrect. These are all incorrect. 
These are all incorrect, right? And these are all these are all Jewish ones right here. This is Jewish garb right there, um, and that's actually not Jewish because let me show you what Jews look like. This is what Jews look like right there. See that giant white zit seat? They have no blue in their zit seats. So instead of any blue at all, they wear zit seats almost down to their their ankles, and those are incorrect, right? And Yah Yahushua talks about that. He says, you know, you're praying on the corners just to see people. You pray and uh, you know extend your zit seats out. Um, I saw this little Jewish boy. This dude. Uh, that is a little Jewish boy right there, right? There's no blue in those zit seats. And so that is that is incorrect. That is going against the law, statutes, and command. So if you are wearing white in your zit seats, you are going against the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. And there's another set of zit seats that are incorrect. And so when I have my zit seats done today, Nicole makes them up for me, and I'll be real happy also to be supporting my new stuff. Um, that's... See, these don't have black in there. Those, those, those have black and blue. That is, that, that's just blue. Oh, wait, no, that that's is black. black, isn't black it? Black and blue. Black and blue. Yeah, so those are all incorrect. Now, this right here, that cord, that might actually be the correct thing. If you made um, your ZZ, that's blue, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you made ZZs out of that, that'd be incorrect. Here's a little, another Jewish boy, right? They have all white. That goes against the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. So we wouldn't want to do that. Again, here's another example. This dude might actually have blue in his. Looks a little blue in there, doesn't it? Maybe. But that's yet another Jew. All these prayer shawls, all of these things, those are traditions of men. All of those things, those are not, um, those are not of Yah. And what do we have again? I think we saw that guy before. These are all incorrect. So there's a biblical blue thread. And hold on. Oh, I was about to sneeze. I am so sorry. Um, yeah, and I don't know about homeboy here. I don't know. He's got. The Star of David on his shirt, too. Yeah, homeboy, that's a real Jew there. That's the Jews. Um, that's, that's who you don't want to be like, right? You don't want to be a Jew. And uh, you want to be a Torah-observant, um, Yah-loving, Yahushua-loving individual. So, anyway, there's not a lot of examples out there because I guess everybody has gone away from the law, statutes, and commands. There's some blue cord right there. So, right there, that would be correct. But they have white underneath of it. So, they're about to make it up. So, it's all... See, this is the white one. Nicole, did you see this one? This is how it looks like blue. It's like this. I just made one like that kind of this morning. All right. So we'll have Nicole do an awesome blue one because I, I think the world is, has been led astray. Um, all of these are incorrect. Um, I see nothing correct here. And these ones actually have the Star of David on there too. That's, that's actually a satanic thing. Shocker, right? All right. I see nothing... I see. I have yet to see one proper seat in I this. Found one. Did you? Yeah. Oh, nice. It's all blue. It's all blue. Yeah, there's one. All right. So Nicole found one. I guess they are, do make them out there. But if you buy them, which I would say you should just make them, you can just get some blue string, and make them and put them on the four corners. We have a little belt that we we have what they call. A, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a just a regular belt. What do they call the thing? It's like a. Oh, uh, it has like two loops or something. It's got two. It's got. It's like we call it. I guess a web belt or something. I don't know what it is. I think they're called grommets. That are like grommeted holes. belt, and we'll show you guys in another video what we have. And we just we put them on there because like the Jews actually have their clothes. Their clothes are all made like um, they have a shirt. That yeah, they they, they have shirts that these things go into, and like this right there, they have their shirt, and they actually have like uh, holes in their shirt. So we don't have anything like that. So we have a belt, and we put them on, and we put them on the four corners of us. And so we just basically put a belt on, and the belt has our zit seats. And so we are keeping that commandment. Or we thought we were keeping the commandment, but now we will be because we'll actually have the right colors. All right, so that leads us to the very end, and I want to thank you guys very, very much. Everybody out there um, who has spent this time with us, we appreciate your time. Uh, much love to you, huge hugs, and thank you guys very, very, very much. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It is a first day, or second day. Second day. This is the second day. Most people are going back to work on the second day. And if you guys are going back to work, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys are praising Yah through everything and um, seeking Him. Seek the kingdom where it is able to be found and seek our Creator. All right. Anyone have anything? Uh, read your Bibles. Read your Bibles. All right. Thank you guys very much for participating. I missed my wingmen out there today. Um, it just wasn't the same. Not to not to knock you guys or anything. I appreciate you. I know. Your... Cade loves to talk. Cade, Cade is my Cade, Cade is my Cade. Caden is my wingman on this. Yep. Yes, definitely. Cade has lots of insights. He does. He does. He's blessed. All right. Thank you guys very much. Much love to everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.